this is Kathy Chase. Um, well, it seems as though I've been screwed over by um, pretty much um, lots of people because of who I was supposed to be, who where I'm supposed to be at now. And um, I'm just going to go through a few associations for you um, in regards to circumstances. Um, first of all, maybe I should go through area codes. Um, Canada, they were expecting me to take off and run and go straight north from where I'm at now in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, straight north would be Manitoba, Canada, with the area code 2204. Um, um, and um, Canada can add a, a can, a normal can of pop, as in the king of pop, Michael Jackson, um, is 12 ounces. Um, there are th 355, 355 milliliters in a 12 ounce can. Okay, um, that is where they expected me to go. You got the red maple leaf, and the maple leaf is, you know, has five points, just the same as a star. Okay, um, I'm going to go over some error codes real, real quick. Some that really stick out to me, and um, I can't get on the internet right now, but um, I'm just going to go over them real, real quick. British Columbia, I think where this might be where, um, um, I, I'm not sure, it might be Vancouver or um, something else. It's 604, okay, that's one that sticks out. Um, the Bay Area in California. San Francisco Bay, uh, 916. Hawaii, this is a big one, um, 808. Um, Idaho, as in Boise, as in potatoes, as in Russes, as in, I don't know, who knows, um, is 208. Colorado, 970. Um, is in um, the majority of the state. Uh, 720 is in the center of the state where Denver would be. Rob was born in 72. And as I talked about, 1979, the wall. And 1997 is where the, the newer edition of the courthouse in Lancaster County now sits. Um, Lancaster, the Lancaster seal is... Um, um, a deer, <laughs> but I'm not a deer. I'm not doe a deer or anything like that. Anyways, Mount Rushmore, as I talked about previously, um, the area code is 605, and I talked about the baby book with the 60 on it. It is 605. Okay, um, Illinois, Chicago area, 779. There's the other, there's the backwards. Um, 97 and there's 79 for the wall. Okay. Um, Arkansas. I'm not really sure which which zip code uh, Little Rock would be in, but the one that st stuck out to me, I don't have access to the internet right now. The one that stuck out to me was 479. Okay, there's a zip code in Texas, which would be 409, like 409 cleaners. 409, it doesn't really necessarily mean anything to me. It's just a cleaner um, and so forth. Um, Florida, um, 727 and 352. North Carolina, pretty much most of the state. There's 919, 910. I was supposed to graduate from Southeast High School in 91. Richard Chase was born January 19th, 1935. Um, North, North Carolina 252. 
sticks out more than the 910 and the 919. Okay, um, Kentucky. Kentucky, as in like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Glasgow. Glasgow is in Kentucky. Um, I don't know. It doesn't tell me on the map where the cities are. It just is an area code map. And it's 270 is the area code. And 606, which you have the 60 forward and the 60 backwards. Um, Pennsylvania. 717. And most importantly, um, I think most importantly, um, would be uh, 202. Washington, D.C. has the 20 forward and the 20 backwards. Okay. Um, I covered most of them. There's another one in the San Francisco Bay area that's wasn't on this map. Um, there's a 925 and then a 909, which would have 90 forwards and backwards, which, you know, as I said, um, Randy and Rob graduated in 90. And I think I'm going to, okay, Maine. Maine, you have Augusta. Maine, um, I only see one area code, which is 207. Um, that is Maine. Um, the I believe the capital city of Maine is Augusta. Augusta is the entrance to Highmark Estates on 84th Street. 84th and Old Cheney Road is where Highmark Estates is at. And um, that is very important. Um, those are the those are the area codes that stick out to me the most right at this time. There is another uh, there is a 210 area code in Texas. Um, um, but and then there's an 816 in Missouri, um, M-O, Missouri, 816, which should be about where Kansas City's at, um, according to this map. 816 in Missouri, um, and 660, 660, I went, I went through the six, 66 thing, Highway 66, or, um, actually, um, Route 66, um, and, um, the U stops, 660 and 816 in Missouri. Okay, I'm done with the, the area codes. There might be a few more that I didn't find, but, um, this is in regards to my foot. Um, the phone in which Maxwell Smart would use um, his shoe phone. Okay. Anyways, I want to talk about a few other things. Um, um, the magnetic strip in money um, is used to prevent counterfeit. Um, counterfeit, um, you know, as I talked about, um, the counters and, um, people and their counterintelligence, um, in regards to my life and what's been placed in my body. Um, the RFID, or the, the magnetic strip and money, um, has RFID, RFID in it. Um, that's how they can determine <laughs> and and um, know um, to make sure that it's not counterfeit um, which cannot be duplicated um, that's why I don't know what year they started doing that but I know it's not hasn't been around that long um, but that um, magnetic strip and and money has nothing to do with me has nothing to do with counterintelligence um, 
but my, you know, the whole thing with people trying to play fraud, fraud, fraud with my life, um, you know, that might be a reference to, to the, um, magnetic strip and money. Um, what, what they want from me, okay, what was placed in my foot was part of a sabotage, okay, on my life. What they really want is in my left hand. My left hand is full of other RFID chips, I'm sure of, because my left hand versus my right hand, um, the veins pop out to, to an extreme amount. And, um, they have, there's been more, um, more IVs and people, nurses doing stuff to my left hand versus my right. And I'm sure of it. What they want is in my left hand. Um, and what I think is what they put in my left foot as a sabotage, they also in the past two, three, four years put in my left hand because they want what was in my left hand. And the reference would be like a hook, as I talked about the cane, I talked about J Street 600, the Veterans Place 600 um, is the initial address, and then the fact that pirates, they have um, hooks for hand, a peg leg, and a hook, okay? A peg leg and a hook um, on their hand. Uh, they have a parrot on their shoulder. And then I discussed the Tico's intersection with um, Tico, Tico's in intersection on 17th and Capitol Parkway. Um, the Tico's symbol is a parrot. Um, on the other side of the street, um, there's a Masonic um, temple. And then there is the Sinclair on the other side. Um, Sinclair, in reference to Clare Street, uh, 52nd and Clare where Zeman School is, here's some Clare references for you. Tim Clare, with no I in it, Tim C-L-A-R-E is a Nebraska University regent. Um, um, then there's Dennis Claridge. He is the one who put my braces on when I had buck teeth. Okay? Buck teeth, sucking your thumb. Well, I never sucked my thumb, but thumbs mean, um, thumb is the okay symbol, and thumb is also the, uh, like a green thumb. But, um, I never sucked my thumb to get the buck teeth that I had, or the, the overbite, the overbite that I had. Um, I talked about, well, there's a lot of references to my baby book, and the L-E with a slash, a font, and font, and the baby book. And then, Another one is eclair, like an eclair donut. Um, there are other ones with the with the clair. There, there's the clair earrings. Pirates wear earrings. Um, then um, Sinclair and you stop, as I talked about um, Sinclair and the locations in like in Nebraska and what they're next to. Um, as far as what I think I was supposed to do um, was to go to law school of some sort, is what I think. Um, I live on High Street right now. Um, I lived on High Street in high school when I dropped out. And the law, well, I think, um, you know, The Chariots of Fire is a movie, and I talked about the fire. Um, and then, um, Oxford, um, the schools right around High Street and, um, there around Oxford and, um, 
the United Kingdom. As I talked about, um, my uh, Chinese astrology being a water ox, and then also um, Abraham Lincoln and Ford, uh, what was it, Ford Theater. Ford um, automobiles were, uh, Ford made the first automobiles, I believe, I'm not really sure, but they used a crank to start the, the car. It's like when the Wright brothers developed the the um, airplane that was done with a crank, I believe. Um, and um, the high street significance to Oxford. Um, I'm currently back on high street. I lived in high street when I was younger. And high street is on the 3200 block. Um, um, Birkenstocks, Berkeley Law School, Sandals, Woodstock, um, those are some references. Barnes, Cape Cod area, um, Barnes and Noble bookstore, Cape Cod, um, you have Capes, Vampires, Eye Teeth, uh, Superman with with the vision. Um, cod, as in cash on delivery, or fishing with a PH instead of an F. Fishing and um, diversion, um, theft. Um, as I said, I think um, my real fate was to be an attorney and then somewhere in government. Um, the at sign is a swirl with an A in the middle, and I talked about A Street here um, as a big significant thing here. Um, a is on the 1400 block. That's where CBA insurance was. The Jackson 5 did ABC um, and other various other songs um, and other references to African American music um, in which date way back um, um, when I was little um, I used to have Navy Nikes Nikes have the check mark the check mark what that really represents is they wanted to make me out to be some sort of rat well I'm not a rat um, Obviously, you can't make a human being a rat, but the check marks as in ballot boxes, ballet, um, ball, and the ball that I held in my hand when I was little, um, um, that, that sort of thing. The, and the at sign, you can't make, you can't, you can't make, uh, you can't make people a rat. You can't make them... Uh, your own sort of there's so many laws against making human beings um, some sort of um, test or as an essay in school or um, to test people without their um, authority or consent which I never gave so that does not apply that part of the whole ticks thing and the symbols, uh, the symbols pages, looking up symbols, symbols and signs and all that other stuff, sign language and so forth. The at, the at sign, which is um, at, as in attorneys, A-T-T, B's knees, attorneys, A-T-T, you know, is, a, is is the beginning part attorneys, and then knees is the end part bees knees, beeswax. You know, southeast nights, black and yellow, um, and um, you know my foot. Um, this little piggy went to the market. Um, my left foot, um, the ball, the the scar. 
by the ball on the ball of my left foot it has so it was was seven stitches at Bryan Hospital on 48th Street when I was approximately 10 or 11 years old um, this little piggy went to the market this little piggy stayed home as the second one this little piggy had roast beef which would be the middle toe third toe this little piggy had none was the f is the fourth one this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home wee in French wee wee in French or we the people as in the Constitution um, um, things in regards to the foot um, parts of the foot Dr. Scholes looks like a school the name Scholes looks like a school if 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 um spelled incorrectly you know how i talked about high definition and high street and all this other stuff as far as televisions and then radio and and all this other stuff um um you know um anyways um a podiatrist I guess is who does the feet and the parts of the feet. Um, and um, then as far as um, doctors, um, specialists, eye doctors, um, an optometrist, okay things with a with the IST at the the end okay the Methodist Hospital uses the flame and the um, cross you know and um, um, Wesley um, I think it's some sort of Wesley um, um, I, I had it written down online, Wesley. Well, that's Robert's middle name, Robert Wesley Chase. And then as I talked about before, I used to say the quote from one of the movies, which was Wesley Snipes' movie, which was, set your $5 ass down before I make change. Um, as I said, there's a lot of references to the Jackson 5, good times, um, um, then, um, Grandmaster Flash and the Fabulous Five, five, think five, and then think African Americans, and then the fact that they were trying to use JKL on the phone, um, I forgot, I lost where I was in my notes. I got a little just distracted. Um, but um, I want to talk about um, clothing I used to wear was um, by The Limited. Um, Forenza. F-O-R-E-N-Z-A. And then I used to wear Outback Red clothing, um, which had the O-B on uh, for the initials I have a picture of myself with my sisters wearing a monogram shirt um, and kind of a peachish orange color with with an a white um, <laughs> a white um, monogram with a, a little bit of a white collar but it was mainly a, a peachish orangish shirt um, as far as the bow is concerned, rainbows and, and reindeers and all that other stuff, we've already gone through that, but, um, bow, um, was the name of my cat that died in the fire on Old Cheney, Old Cheney Place Apartments, Bobo the Clown, Bo and Luke Duke, B&O Railroad, um, bows, 
um, bows and arrows, um, um, and um, um, that sort of thing. Um, and bow, as I said, bow and bow railroads, um, B and O railroad monopoly. Um, um, and then the whole tripping thing with trips and Samson at like Samson at luggage and Samson and Delilah, Romeo and Juliet, um, William Shakespeare, Shakespeare, fishing poles, fishing with a PH, not an F. Um, typical souvenirs when you go on a trip would be a lot of people buy shot glasses. I don't know what the top 10 souvenirs would be, but I would say, just out of my guess, would be like a t-shirt or um, a shot glass. That's just what comes to mind. Uh, travel, places I traveled recently were Chicago, Texas, and of course, growing up, going always going to Colorado. Colorado, I feel like people are mimicking me in my life and the places I've been and trying to steal my identity and it looks really creepy to me um, when people write their um, things about their lives and then it totally reflects mine and then when I've seen watch the news and people are mimicking me and which I don't know <laughs> All I can say is that um, things look really weird as far as what I talk about one day or previous to what I'm ta going to talk about right around the time I'm talking about it, usually right after. It's like, it's like I'm being stalked by presidents, okay? Um, you can follow this back um, three, four years and you will see it. But I grew up going to Colorado. I spent a lot of time in Colorado growing up. Um, that was always the favorite family vacation. We went to Adventureland one time or two times maybe. Worlds of Fun in Kansas City. Um, uh, we went to Mount Rushmore once when I was really, really little. But I don't really remember it that well. I just remember the only thing I remember. This is really weird. The only thing I remember was standing in the parking lot. <laughs> outside Mount Rushmore. That's what I remember. Um, the other thing I remember. Um, as far as people saying that I've met people in the past. Or rock stars in general. Or, or famous people. Um, the only thing I remember is teeth. Um, and um, um, and so um, what I think why that was is because um, George Washington, I believe it was, the f you know the first president of the United States. Um, which is said to be one of the best presidents we ever had, he had wooden, wood teeth, okay? So, um, that's maybe where I think some of this comes from with the root canal and then the roots of slavery and then the fact that I can see things that other people can't see, um, which people have picked up on, perhaps, I'm not really sure, but I can tell I'm awake enough or I have the ability to see um, who people are related to. And that can be just about anybody. If I study people long enough or look at them at just a glance, people have noticed this on TV, media, I'm sure, people in the public, I can, I can tell who people are related to by looking at them. So, I could never do that before in my life. Never. So, for me, this is really weird. And I don't, you know, people have given me the clue that that's not something that everybody else can do. 
okay? So I can look at people and I can tell who they're related to. And when then, you know, the whole puppet strings and and the whole thing with um, um, the pacemaker, um, <laughs> they were trying to say, well, as far as shoe ties and, and potato shoe strings and all this other stuff, they thought they'd, I don't know what they were doing. But anyways, I didn't know what they were re relating to as far as what they wanted to cover up. But um, my understanding was my life with like using the Pledge of Allegiance to cover up my life. And I'm thinking I am the most American person you'll ever meet, you know, or obviously more American than a good majority of the people around me because I would never sabotage other people's lives or be that desperate or be that greedy financially to want to hurt somebody over power or money, okay? I don't know if they thought they were going to cover up the fact that I could see who people were related to, presidents or, um, and so forth, or rock stars or um, just people around me in general because I can turn on the TV, look at somebody, you know, for two seconds and I can follow their, their, their family roots within, you know, I can study a person's face for five or ten minutes and I can tell, you know, I can tell them about five or ten people that they're related to and which have political power or fame, but it might be that I'm able to see, um, you know, I can see things in people's faces that I couldn't see before I was to a certain amount of alertness. And this has nothing to do with clairvoyancy because I can't, I can't read the future. It's just that I can see people's family trees. Okay? Well, I couldn't do that before. Okay? And, you know, as I said, we live in the Arbor State, Nebraska. Um, and, um, um, you know, your family tree, the roots as far as has nothing to do with hair and I'm not supposed to be really a president's slave or you know or whatever financial slave or whatever or here to just pick on because I'm supposed to be in government you know or whatever it's just the fact that um I'm I'm able to see um, who people are related to, and I I, don't, I guess from my understanding is other people can't do this either. I'm not allowed. Nobody can talk to me. They can talk to me, but they're too scared. So people look at me all the time, and they're just floored. You know how this the expression goes, being floored by by the things I say, what I uncover, because. Um, well, we know Resolve, <laughs> the floor cleaner, right? Rug doctors. Anyways, um, we know, um, you know, the Resolute Desk and all that other stuff. Um, magic Carpet Rides um, and so forth. Um, basically... Um, people give me the understanding that I see more than other people. <laughs> I certainly see a lot of dead people <laughs> because they're bad people. But <laughs> I'm not saying everybody. <laughs> I'm not saying everybody because I know there's a lot of good people here in Lincoln. They're just is af they're they're afraid because of what I see and and this this goes to all ages of all people. Um, in society that um, this is happening to me for a reason but it's, it's a tragedy my life is a tragedy because I was supposed to be somewhere else in my life and um, 
So I'm not sure what the presidency, I'm not sure who's under whose hypno hypnosis. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing. All I know is they're not doing good to me. Um, I know I'm supposed to be in government somewhere right now. Um, people mess with my fate. I should have probably a law degree right now. I'm 38 years old and, um, um, there's always more, you know, um, so, um, I'm just going to keep talking. I'm going to keep documenting because that's what I need to do. That's what I'm supposed to do. Um, somebody told me, um, to keep talking, just keep talking, just keep doing what you're doing and, or gave me the understanding that's, that's what I was supposed to do. And, um, and, um, as I talked about rainbow law and their whole colors, and I talked to a psychiatrist named Robert Arias, um, he, um, I talked to him about being unhypnotized. I told him that, um, sounds and shades bothered me and colors bothered me. And, um, I told him about wanting to be unhypnotized or, um, de what do you call this uh, in government? You call it debriefed or de, um, to have things undone, to be, um, it's just like when, um, classifications come undone, it's called declassified, unclassified, meaning declassified, meaning they open up the files. Well, um, D Street, First Plymouth Church, the Chase family, and all Rob's lovers, um, are responsible, um, for a lot of this, most of this, um, Richard Chase used to sign my cards with a slash by the E when I talked about, um, the E thing with legs, pantyhose, and then, um, Lee Infant, um, uh, what's the middle name? I, I don't know. It's a long name and, and so forth. But I do have some of those cards, I'm sure, in the closet here. Um, a great deal of evidence hopefully has not been stolen from me because I've tried very hard to to keep a hold of a good majority of this evidence um, for documentation. So I'm, I'm doing the best I can, and hopefully um, everything will be all right. Um... My life is very, very scary. Um, nobody should ever be put in this situation. Um, and, um, you know, the whole thing with SS, Social Security, Social Services, the SS. To me, in reality, it stands for Secret Service. They're trying to have a secret service for me, meaning think they're going to kill me and cover it up because of the place I'm supposed to have in government as a woman. So, um, you know, um, it's pretty serious what's going on here, and it's not my fault, um, not at all, and... Um, what's happened to me in my life is a tragedy because, you know, women, um, women's suffrage, you know, the Constitution, um, the way I've been victimized and abused by all these laws and abused by the Constitution and with no... No remorse from politicians, obviously. Um, 
power. <laughs> well, if you have to sell your soul, and if you have no integrity, and if you have to sell your soul to rock and roll or whatever, you know, for money and greed and power, I would never sell my soul. I still have my soul. My soul is intact. Regardless of how many ways they have victimized me in the process of trying to place roadblocks and obstacles into um, um, basically, you know, corrupt my whole life because they knew I was supposed to do something and they knew they've manipulated government to the highest degree possible so that makes them the traitors not me I'm not I'm not the traitor because if they would have not messed with my true fate I would have gone to school finished people would have never known about me other than until I got to where I was supposed to go when I was supposed to be there. But people messing with my fate, um, people certainly know who I am in a different level than they would have before. Exploiting me as a sabotage and, um, and, 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 and so forth. And, um, you know, it's out of my hands and not something I do. And I'm not a traitor. Uh, I'm far from it. I, um, I'm just fighting for what's right. And what's, what's happened to me is wrong. Um, you can't, you can't possibly be that greedy and that thoughtless and that self-centered and to steal, to steal things that aren't yours, you know, money, you know, money, greed, power, that's not what America's supposed to be about when it comes to people who are supposed to be taking care of this country and we, the people, of the United States of America. We are supposed to have look at our look at our presidents and the people who run this country. We're supposed to look at them. We're supposed to look up to them to the highest standards to live up to the laws of this country and to live up to the constitution and to um, not her not make people outcasts and abuse them and break laws intentionally against them. You know, it's pretty sick when they abuse me with all these laws and even religion because they were so pathetically desperate. And um, they've even used the rainbow laws with all these colors that people are going by rainbow laws to try to to um, forge me out of my life because I live by Quell Valley Apartments and that's where I stepped on the glass uh, Quell Ridge Circle is right next to Quell Valley Apartments and then you got Valley Forge um, so you know it goes on and on and on um, and um, you know, it, it's, it's just sad because here I thought I lived in the best country of the world and by laws and by the constitution, it is supposed to be the best country in the world, but here what's happened to me is about as an anti-American as anti-American as, as could happen to anybody 
in modern times. It's very un-American. And I'm sitting there wondering, which country laws are you going by? <laughs> because they're not going by the laws of the United States of America. Um, so, I'm very American. I do know the laws of this country. I know the basic laws. I know the important laws. And I do know, um, beyond the ones that I listed, um, <laughs> there's several more. You go down the list of the Constitution and the Acts of the Constitution, and and how they think they're going to mock me for being an American-born citizen. You know, I I am an American-born citizen. You know, and um, these people are pathetic and. thoughtless and and you know I've never hurt anybody they can't do nothing to me you know why you know why the presidents can't do anything to me not a thing they can try to sabotage my life all they want but there's nothing they can do to me you know why because all I've done is used my first amendment rights they can try to manipulate my character all they want. They can lie about me all they want. But all I've done is use my First Amendment rights. And people know. People know. What I say is true. They watch what I do. And the steps that I do them in. All I have to do is use cross-examination. The way lawyers do. And um, cross-examine every step that I've taken um, to uncover what I've uncovered and why would they pick on somebody so much you know I was just a stay-at-home mom and the harassment and the abuse increased more and more and more as I awoke because they knew I'd figure out what I've figured out now and um, so if, you know, I can't, I can't get them to change who they are. You know, it's just like Bob Gunzel, my old English teacher, said, had on his clock. Bob Gunzel, he said, had said on his clock, you know, it's, oh, it's, one of it was, it's not time yet, keep working or something. And then the other thing was, times change, people don't. Times change people don't. And Bob Gunzel at Pound Junior High, he, um, he, um, liked to sail. He had ships all over the, all over the place. And he, um, we studied Greek mythology in there and we read the old man of the sea and the lion of witch in the wardrobe and all that stuff. It was, he was a very good teacher. Um, so, um, there might be some relevance to that class and other, other teachers and classes that I've taken. Um, so, um, I think, um, there's a lot of truth in that, what, what, what he taught. And, you know, as far as people that pretended to be my friends, you know, they don't change. They still come at me because they betrayed me. They had no integrity. They only cared about themselves. And that's just when people are that way, people are that way. And they don't change. His quote was, times change, people don't. Okay. And you got Times Square. And then you got the do si -do and square dancing we did. And... And what was it? I think that was at Zeman. Or maybe it was at Pound. I can't really remember. Um, but as I talked about the check days um, and, and the references to ballot boxes and, um, and so forth, 
Um, I am now at the age, um, I'm 38 years old. Um, I'll be 39 in 2012, which um, makes me, um, the tax started when I became eligible to be the age to be president of the United States of America, just so people are aware of that, and people in the public do know that. Um, I am 38 years old. Um, September 20th of 2012, I will be 39 years old. So, um, people need to think about that a little bit. The attack started on my life, um, as I started awakening and, um, happen now because I am eligible to be the president of the United States. I'm eligible to run for president and um, and so forth. So um, my life because other people who shouldn't have known things that they found out about penetrated government and knew about things that they shouldn't have known about is probably what has put me in my um, situation because people dictated and ruined 26, 27 years of my life and and so forth so and the tax started right around the time i would have been eligible to be president of the united states of america as people know most of it most of the attacks have been in the past three to four years so um that's i I think I've said, you know, a lot today, I've talked about a lot, and, you know, there's, there's, there's so much information out there, I don't even know if I really even need to talk about so much of it anymore as far as the connections and um, my life as far as the, the desperate things that people did to me. Um, out of whether it was jealousy or power hunger or money hunger, you know, people, people can see, people can see the truth and, um, it's tough being in Lincoln, Nebraska for one, it's tough having being around famous people um, who were raised in the community it's tough having to deal with presidents it's tough having to deal with sexist bias of males and the fact that we have the first black American president versus um, the first female president um, and um, you know, it's 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 very difficult because I have you know what what's in my left hand has um, ruined my life in a sense because. I was supposed to set out and do something totally on my own without anybody bothering me. Other people penetrated government and took advantage of that fact. The Chase family um, and so forth. Um, the Huberts, the Lassens, the Hedgelands, they all knew and took advantage of it. And 
they can speak for themselves with what they say happened. But, um, it's just, you know, these people have made a lot of money off my life. And you'd think they'd get tired of being so full of themselves with their egos and their selfishness and their thoughtlessness. You'd think they'd get sick of themselves um, for being the way they are, you know? I mean, because they could have been reasonable and rational, rational, you know, during all this time, which they didn't really care to do. And that, that'll tell you right there, you know, You know, I'd rather not have this in my hand, my left hand, because I was supposed to do something. It was supposed to be what I was supposed to do, okay? It was what I was supposed to do. There was something I was supposed to do, I was supposed to do, and other people mess with my fate, and they tread upon me and my life. They tread upon government. They tread upon what I was supposed to do. Okay, it wasn't my choice to begin with, but it wasn't their their doing to take advantage of that either. I mean, it would mean it was they did it, but who who were they to take advantage of those things that they knew about? And for now, right now, it seems like um, they're trying to change. Um, certain um, traditions and government for greed. They're trying to sell me out. They're, and um, I'm not the only one though, okay? I'm not the only one that they've trying to sell out, okay? And they can't do what they're doing because I'm supposed to be highly protected and there's nothing they can do about it. And they know that. There's nothing that the presence can do to lure me to death. By, by all the legalities. Um, but um, it's not my fault. They don't want to be reasonable. And they want to be greedy and all this other stuff. Um, and then um, what I realize um, is that... Um, People will sell out people who are supposed to have certain fates. Well, I do know I am one person that they try to sell out because I'm a girl, right? I'm, I'm a woman. Um, here I am, 38 years old. I don't have my degree yet. I'm behind, you know. And um, people have done all these bad things to me in my life. Um... And, um, but I do think I can't do nothing for this person, but to say that I'm pretty sure that, um, Chase, uh, Robert Spicer was planned to go down with me, um, as another diversion. And Chase Spicer told me he has um, a, um, a degree in um, criminal justice. He told me he had a degree in criminal justice. I've never seen this degree. Okay. Um, I think... What I think, he he might not believe me because I think he's under hypnosis or something. And that's not really my concern. But I, I think, you know, he drinks a lot. He's got a gambling, he said he's had a gambling problem. I don't know how much of that is an act or whatever, but um, some of it's not. And, um... 
I know who when I know what. And I think, I think he was supposed to have some sort of role in government later on after me. I'm not sure what, but that's just what I think. Um, because he's the one they've tried to sell out with me. And there's evidences that he was part of that plan. And he might actually sell me out because he doesn't understand and he might you know he's poor and and he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't understand he's not, he's not he's not in a in a situation or position in in the same way as I am at um but I think I think he was supposed to I think he was supposed to um be in government somewhere and that's really what I think. Um, but as far as, um, you know, stating any, 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 um, other information about that, um, I'm, 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 I'm just sure he was supposed to be somewhere else. Okay. And right now, and he, just the same as I, you know, they're trying to sell him out. Same time as they're trying to sell me out, but I'm priority because I'm a woman for one. For two, I've made people <laughs> so much money. Um, for three, as a result of my circumstances, um, I have indirect power, evidently, of some sort. I know people listen to me, and they should, because I'm not lying. I have nothing to hide. Um, I want to help people, not hurt them. And um, it's not my fault that these other people were that desperate to obtain certain statuses to um, not worry about um, what they had to corrupt to get what they wanted in life and um, so I have a clear conscience absolutely um, and um, you know Now, it's tough to be me, you know, as a woman. It's tough to be me as a woman, put in the situation that I was put into. Here I've gone all these years, never knowing about it. And, um, to, to talk to people that avoid me, presidents avoid me, people know that, and, um, not my fault, you know, they could have, um, done things differently, whether it would have been 27 years ago or 5 years ago, they could have interceded to come upon to come upon their consciences which they have yet to have done they have not come upon their consciences and that's not my fault and um, not only trying to sell me out but selling government out in the process for the power and the greed of money um, is not my liability. Um, whether they want to say, keep passing this blame thing around, 
Oh, it was the Chase family. Oh, it was the Bushes. Oh, it was Obama. Oh, it was Shannon. Oh, it was Cam. Oh, it was Rob. Blah, 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 blah. They keep doing this. That's not, that's not going to work with the people of America. That's not going to work with the government either. You know, being the leader of this country it does not mean you have to be a freaking coward and pass on your irresponsibility to other people in or out of government and you don't you don't pass you don't pass the blame to other people and keep switching the blame around because you know, on the president's desk, on the resolute desk, the buck is supposed to stop there. Meaning, you're not supposed to play this crap. And it's very inefficient. It's very irresponsible. It's very unlawful. It's pathetic to treat me this way. Because I'm a good person. I didn't deserve any of this exploitation. I'm not square because I had a, something put in my foot on 48th Street in the hospital. Um, firehouse number 12 is on 84th Street and so forth. Fire station number 6 uh, is on Clare Avenue. Um, they put a new fire station on 27th and Old Cheney where my fire was. And pub court. Um, you know, it's not going to work for the people. You keep passing this around, creating confusion in the public. People are going to people know. People aren't stupid. The citizens of the United States of America are not dumb. They are not dumb people. You've got them scared out of their freaking wits, and I'm scared too. I'm not only scared for me, but I'm scared for the citizens of this country because of the lack of integrity, rationality, lack of responsibility, and the huge levels of irresponsibility going on here. And to try to blame me for other people's lack of integrity and inability to... Um, um, be fair without partiality to be diplomatic, to be diplomatic. Um, you know, I am, I am middle of the road, but I'm not roadkill. Um, I would describe myself not Republican, not Democratic. I would consider myself independent and um, and you know I've seen too much of you know all the bad things people can do and society is so tired of seeing all the negatives and the pessimism that I think we need to do things better. I think the United States can do a lot better and people are too lazy to do better. For what reason? I don't know. Do you profit off of bad things that happen? I don't know. But profiting off of my misery, we already know that one. But we can do a lot better. I guarantee the citizens of the United States of America, we can do a lot better. A lot better. And, um, I don't know which politician, if there's a politician out there who can deliver that, I don't know of any. Because I don't, I don't know them. I haven't studied them. And there's none I, at this time, I would, um, there's not, there's not one, there's not a single politician at this point I would endorse to be the next president of the United States. However, 
<laughs> I would endorse myself to be the next president of the United States. Absolutely. Um, but there, there's nobody at this point in time um, in which I endorse to be president of the, of the, of the United States for 2012. Um, I've thought myself about um, getting on um, getting on the ballot, um, putting myself on the ballot, um, and um, I've thought about that. Um, I don't know. Um, I'd like to, because I think I would do a good job. You know, I think I, if, if, if I, you know, I'm so frustrated in my own situation and so disappointed in the people that have ruined my life that I just have this drive in me to want to do better for the citizens of the United States and thinking about them and solely them and not myself as the same way as these people do. They only think of themselves. And reestablishing the important things that makes, you know, that makes the United States of America the United States of America you know, um, I would run for president if I had, um, if I knew I had the support, which I think I could get, I think I could get enough support and enough, um, petitions going to, um, to be president, to be a very good president. I do not doubt myself and my abilities. I do not, de I do not have any doubts over my capabilities as a person to do solely what is right, to be able to use, um, logic and compassion and psychology and to simply care about, you know, people um, and not use other people to divert from, you know, from other things. And I'm just saying, you know, I, I don't, I don't lack self-esteem, I don't lack self-confidence, um, I know I have great, um, I have good abilities, I have great, um, character, I have great character, um, and I have extremely good integrity towards other people. Um, integrity is important to me. Loyalty is important to me. Um, and so forth. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say right now, this is Kathy Chase, nominate me for president in the year 2012 because I have not even had the time. If I had the time and a staff, I would say that. I don't have that. I would say, get me on the ballot. I'll, I'll go for it, you know? I, I do feel that I could do what people Underest have underestimated, under, underestimated me, excuse me, 
one of my biggest, one of my biggest pet feet, pet peeves, <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves in life was to be underestimated. I hate to be underestimated. Um, but, you know, you know, there's a little blank spot on the ballots. <laughs> you can feel free to write my name in that blank spot. There used to be another spot where you can put somebody's name in. You can spell my name. You can put K-A-T-H-I space C-H-A-S-E in that blank spot if you so wish to. Um, I would not um, I would not go under the category of Republican or Democrat. I would simply be under independent. Um, so, um, I don't believe in labeling myself personally because I have many views on many subjects and, um, I think people know me pretty well as far as you know, my, my thoughts on certain things and, and so forth and how I base my thoughts and my decisions solely on logic and compassion and consideration. Logic is number one. You do everything by logic. You, you problem solve by logic. You problem solve versus creating new problems. And that is what, um, what, what I, you know, that's what you have, that's what's obvious is what, as to what you do. Um, um, you know, I'm not reading from a, from a piece of paper or, a, or, you know, at this point. I've already went through my notes a long time ago, but, um, I'm just, you know, talking right now. I'm not, le I'm not reading from a teleprompter. I don't have somebody writing my speeches. Um, so I don't have a staff. I don't have all that, you know, I don't have a, I don't have, um, entourage, you know, I don't have certain things. I'm just myself. I am Kathy Joe Carolyn Chase, main name Eggers, E G G E R S. And, you know, if you want to vote for me, go for it. If you want to put me on the ballot, go for it. <laughs> you know, I don't care. Because if people voted for me, and I actually won, I would do the job. Um, but, you know, I don't have anybody around me. They want to keep people away from me because they don't want me to um, do what I want to do. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to try to compete with their entourages or their social cliques or their cocktail parties or rubbing elbows. You know, I'm just a me. I am me. I'm telling you who I am. I'm telling you what I want to do, what I think. I've written in blogs about insurance. I've written blogs about... Um, um, so, so sociology, as far as psychology, as far as what the media should be doing to, um, help society. I've talked about, um, health insurance where we all know, you know, the, the, the medical costs does not start with the insurance companies. 
it starts with the medical provider, which would be doctors and hospitals. And there's always logic, and there's always a start to things. And um, using it logic to, to solve problems and society instead of, you know, how many years? How many presidents have been through this health insurance thing? <laughs> really? Um, it's simple. It's really, really simple. Um, hospitals are all privately owned. And um, we just need to put um, some 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 things into place with what they're charging patients and then you know that goes on to the medical insurance companies and then on to the patient that just all just needs to be audited hospitals and doctors need to be audited to the degree in which what they're charging patients for what, whether it's medical supplies or, or um, their services and what their profits are because um, hospitals are a monopoly because they're all privately owned and that is where the problem starts, okay? It doesn't start with the insurance companies. Insurance companies, we need our private health insurance companies because we the people of the United States deserve to have options it's just like having the right to have health insurance okay um, we the people have the right to have choices okay nobody should tell us what we should or should not do that is the way our country is ran the way our country is supposed to be um, ran to have the freedom to make our own choices um, and um, I guarantee you we wouldn't keep going through this health care issue if people would just you know look at the fact that it doesn't start with the health insurance companies it starts with the the providers, the doctors, and 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 the hospitals. Okay. We put um, caps and limits on what they can charge the insurance companies. That goes under the insurance companies, and then it goes on to the patients. And I guarantee you that hospitals will get their money that much faster. If they charge less to the insurance companies and then on to the patient, the patient will be able to pay their bills that much quicker. Um, health insurance costs will go down considerably if um, hospitals in particular, particularly hospitals, because that's the majority of the high cost in healthcare is with our hospitals and that's why our health insurance is so high um, so that's the majority of it anyway and if they pass that on you know it's it's just like the food chain you know um, and as far as tax tax refunds go um, uh, taxing people. Um, um, it's, it's, it seems kind of odd to give big, huge corporations bailout money, okay? This seems really dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. You know why? Because it's, 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 it's the chain effect. Um, you know, the little people feed the big people. The consumers, the consumers, the consumers, the consumers. Well, who are the consumers? Mostly the middle class. If you give anybody a tax refund 
or tax incentives, you give it to the middle class because they're the ones that spend the money in which the big corporations make their money off of, okay? <laughs> I find this so ridiculous to give big corporations bailouts because it's only going to last them a few months and you're still going to have the middle class being poor and you're still going to have the poor being poor and it's like throwing money away. It's like, oh, here's some cocktail money and then, you know, when that runs out, you know, what good does that do? You have to start with people who, um, it's just like the food chain, you know, the smaller animals eat the, or the bigger animals eat the smaller animals, okay? But it's opposite with the economy. You have the little people, uh, the small business people, small business, small businesses and the middle class, um, they're the ones, you know, they can, they're the consumers. You have the rich people, well, they're always spending money, okay? You know, they're always rich. Sometimes they give money, sometimes they don't, or whatever, okay? But the majority of the population is middle class, okay? And that's where the focus is, the middle class, okay? Because that's the majority, and that's where, if you're going to give um, tax refunds or tax incentives, you give them to the middle class or the lower middle class. You give them to the lower middle class and the people are, that are on the verge of coming out of the poor bracket to get them out of the poor bracket to um, stimulate the economy. You have to give um, people money to spend so they can go out and buy cars, so they can go out and buy, buy items, which is what the corporations are all about. Are all about. <laughs> I find this so ridiculous. Company bailouts. Okay, you know, <laughs> doesn't make sense. You hand money to big corporations, but what does that do for the people who actually are the consumers? Nothing. It does nothing. It's, it's stupid. It makes no sense. It's like, oh, well, we'll get $800 billion from Congress, and we're going to give $100 billion to bail out big corporations, and then, you know, a couple months down the road, they're going to be screwed again because <laughs> the other people, the majority of the population, does not have the money to pump into the economy. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's common sense and it's logic. You go with the majority of the population and what they need. You don't, you know, you keep feeding the rich. It's not going to necessarily make them richer. If you don't have the middle class, you have nothing. And I raised middle class. I'm not nothing. <laughs> but, you know, I'm smart, you know, without the middle class, then we'd have no economy, really, what would the big corporations do without the, the consumers and the people who buy this stuff, they'd have nothing. We'd have meltdown, corporation meltdown, if it wasn't for the middle class. Okay, there's wealthy people, but they're not the majority, right? I don't think the wealthy people, the rich people, are the majority. And they can't, sp they can keep spending. They'd have to spend all their, all the wealthy people would have to spend all their money to make up for some of the middle class and what, what they purchase as consumers. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this stuff and, it, you know, it's so common sense and logic. You, I, I use logic with everything. 
and it's so frustrating to me when other people don't. When they don't use logic, when they don't use um, rationality and compassion for the people, you know, it's, it's, it's absurd, you know. If we want to be the best country in the world, not meaning powerful, I mean best country as far as setting a good example, we have to be doing way different than what we're doing now. And, you know, this is, hopefully, this is my, this is my rally for Wall Street. <laughs> Because this is what I believe and my hopes for the United States of America and abroad. Um, I know we can do better and um, I'm, I know I need to work on my speaking skills a little bit, a little rough on the edges, but you know, something you kind of adapt to I suppose and I'm talking into a $20 microphone into a mp3 player so um, you know I don't have an entourage <laughs> and I don't have connections you know and social clicks <laughs> and so forth but anyways um, we can do better we, we can do a lot better and at this time I am NOT endorsing any politician at this point in time. Um, I'm waiting to see what happens here in the next few months. But as I said, um, my name's Kathy Chase, K A T H I, last name Chase, C H A S E. If you want to put my name and endorse me, <laughs> go for it because um, I would do it, I would do the job. And um, I wouldn't be lazy. And um, I'm sure I could pull myself together um, <laughs> to be a better speaker and so forth. And I do know I have good diplomatic abilities with other nations because that is just how I think. I'm very rational and I'm very... Um, diplomatic in my thinking um, always looking for the best solutions versus um, creating more problems and um, you know might as well you know speak my mind on on everything because everybody else has taken advantage of my life and um, this is my right as um, a U.S. born citizen in the Midwest, um, born in the Midwest, Lincoln, Nebraska, which is in the heartland, um, to speak my mind and to talk about how I feel about government and what we should be doing and how we can be doing things better um, for the people of this country and um, to um, to be um, efficient um, I think we could be a lot more efficient as a country and a lot more productive um, I think we could manage things a little bit differently, um, but that's just, you know, how other politi politicians think. They all have their own ideas on how they, th how things should be done. Um, I base all my views on logic and by experience. Um, I myself have insurance experience. I've worked in an insurance company. Um, I have some psychology background. 
I know a little bit about psychology um, and um, um, I have a little bit of experience in lots of places um, gerontology um, I've worked with elderly people um, um, and taking care of kids for many years my own children um, and um, and so um, kind of of all ages I've been around some wealthy people not a lot but some and um, I know you know I've never been one person that that, that could be bought as far as um, to win me over <laughs> people have tried to win me over with money before and that never really worked you know it never worked um, you know I've, I've experienced a little bit just a tiny bit of things that at a different level but not a lot not not to any degree by what um, famous people and such you know the standards they live by and you know jet setting and um, you know certain social things that I've never experienced um, but they don't scare me at all um, um, I'm not somebody who can be intimidated um, by somebody's wealth or, or any of those sort of things so um, I'm not I'm not a person who feels like I'm intimidating to others <laughs> even though some people say have said that I'm intimidating but I'm not um, but I'm not I'm not intimidating at all I'm just somebody who um, is very secure um, and ex I'm I have I'm very secure with myself I don't have I have my self-esteem is fine I don't have a big ego I don't have an ego at all and don't even think about ego um, uh, and so forth I just think um, I believe in um, treat people how they treat you and you know mutual respect and that sort of thing and um, I don't believe one class is better than another um, you know and so forth um, so um, I'd like to see people do do good I'd like to see pov people from pover out of poverty come out of poverty that shouldn't be there and um, as far as people who are wealthy you know as long as they share it that's good um, I see a lot of people who are wealthy doing a lot of good things and that's good to see um, and um, you know and so forth in the middle class you know people who were once in the middle class upper middle class um, in recent years are now in the lower middle class not my fault um, because of financial strain in the past three four five years and um, as the economy got kind of bad there and hopefully it's getting better now but um, you know people who went in and bought real estate when times were good and then sunk you know um, I've had that experience got in when times were good and you know foreclosures and all that other stuff I myself had a credit rating it was around 740 
upper seven, you know, right around 750, 740. High um, credit level, high credit rate rating. I always strive for that. And with the circumstances of my life and people closing in on my life, they tore that all apart because I was never one to um, not believe in paying and bill paying bills. I believe people should pay their bills if they can pay their bills and um, and so forth. Um, but um, hopefully, you know, you know, Wall Street, you know, that Wall Street's been up about 600 points, somewhere around 600 points in the past, since the end of November. Um, we're going into the new year, and it would be great if going into the new year we see a big jump, but sorry about the people in the last quarter. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that, or nothing anybody can do about that, and I don't corner the market, and that has nothing to do with me, because, you know, I just think morale. I have, I have, I'm an optimistic person, and I believe in good morale. Um, you know, how they rally troops. You have to rally the citizens of the United States and say, we can do better, you know, and, and we can do better, and we don't need pessimism, we don't need communism, and, but we need optimism, because, <laughs> um, being optimistic, no matter how bad your life can be or get, you know, you have things in your life, your responsibilities to your children or, or whatever, you know, if you have children, you should want to strive better for them to do better for them, to give them what you didn't have in life. And sometimes, you know, when people have mental health problems, I consider myself to be um, very mentally st stable. Um, I don't consider myself to have mental problems other than um, some post-traumatic stress disorders or disorder um, as a, as a, as a, um, as a result of abuses that I've endured under duress and circumstances and abuses, as I said, in recent years, um, but, you know, what I say to people who, if you were, you know, abused as children, or, you know, um, and are raising children yourself, um, don't be, don't hurt your children the way you hurt. Always do better for them so we can stop the cycle of mental illness in this, in, in the world because, um, it starts with the parents and work through what you dealt with if you were abused or if you had problems growing up or or whatever if you had a, a tragedy or trauma that happened in your life um and deal with those effectively using all the coping skills available to you you know get help um journal um blog um talk to counselors and so forth but what we need to do for the future of the country and and for the world is to try to get away from mental illness because mental illness for the most part is preventable and for the most part it starts with the parents to not 
um, go into this cyclic um, um, state in which you become bitter and do the same thing to your children as what happened to you or, or whatever, you know, um, if you were neglected, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, if your dad or your mom didn't spend enough time with you or they didn't understand you or you, uh, you went through, um, a tragedy, a fire, a hurricane or, or lost somebody in your life when you were younger or you were abused in some physical way or mental way, um, you know, steer that towards dealing with that on your own and with other people, talking to them, and then um, redirect that, that pain into helping people in which, you know, to stop the cycle because, you know, you and everybody else can make a difference whether you think so or not because abuse carries from one person to the next more than people ever can ever imagine if you say you know if you if you feel bad about yourself you don't take that out on other people why do you feel bad about yourself? You're supposed to talk about it with, you know, and get help. Um, sometimes people feel bad about themselves because they hurt other people. And that's usually why people feel bad about themselves a lot of the time. And a majority of the time, people feel bad about themselves because they hurt people. And they keep doing it. And so it kind of goes in a, in a cycle. So um, what people can do is to, you know, say, you know, you got to stop. You got to stop. You got to stop the cycle somewhere. And now is a, is a great time. We're, we're in modern society where... Everything available out there to help people and their families um, to extinguish mental illness, you know, is all in the power of you, the people, and everybody, all the citizens of the world to, to um, you know, don't hurt other people because you hurt at one time. Um, do the opposite, you know, take all your anger and, or your aggression, you know, put it on paper or talk to counselors and then say, you know what, I'm going to do other, do, do the opposite for other people. Other people have hurt me in my life. I want to do the opposite and help people because I don't want this to keep happening to people in society and in the world that's how things work and that's how psychology works and you don't have to use trickery to do what's right you know and trickery is obsolete greed and jealousy are just those who um, um, people who use People who are jealous or greedy or have to use trickery are those who don't feel so good about themselves and the things they've done in their lives. That's not the way to think. You do things from, from your heart and in, in, this, in the way that you, um, some things that make you feel good about yourself and at the same time, you make other people feel good. And it, that's how things work. You do things for other people to make them feel good. You feel good. And 
you know, that's how things get better. And even if, if the other person doesn't reciprocate, that's okay, okay? You know, it may take, it may not work with one person, but then they'll remember it. People never forget when other people are good to them. And, you know, eventually, if people keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this, then we're going to have more um, good things in society than bad things. Too many people reflect on um, the bad things in the news and so forth. Um, news focuses on the negative things more than the, the good things in society a lot of the times. And if we started working towards using the power of our abilities as human beings to focus on the good things in life, then people would repeat that. You know, you have copycat crimes and so forth because people see that and think that's the example they're supposed to live by. <laughs> and that's not the truth. That's not the way things work. You're supposed to set a good example and then hopefully and psychologically, if people feel good, they'll repeat that in the same way. And if, if news people focused on more good stories than bad, we'd be a lot better off. And this is not just nationwide, this is worldwide. News companies, news corporations, broadcasting, radio, television, you focus on more good than bad, you're going to see a huge turnaround in society more than you can imagine. Okay? Because, you know, bad things are always going to happen, right? Okay? But if you focus on more good than bad, it's going gonna, it's gonna to eventually flip around. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Think about it. You focus on the good things. People are going to want to do good for the, uh, for other people. People are going to focus on good. People aren't going to look be downers and depressed and think that society is all this. You have to um, reestablish what news is all about. You have to reestablish what society is all about. You have to reestablish... Re what um, real relationships in general, whether by acquaintance or, um, you know, just being a part of society to just get along with other people, to use um, affirmation and positive feedback and to... Feed people the good. If you start doing this, <laughs> you, 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 you see the bad results in society because you have all this bad stuff. But the truth of the matter is if you t do, you know, steer away from the bad. Get away from it. It's always going to be there, okay? Or it might not always be there. You have to start backtracking what you're doing in the news and so forth and say you know it's time to p concentrate as a modern society on the good things okay and once you start doing that we're gonna have um, society is going to um, show you what can happen it's sociology it's psychological sociology and psychology work hand in hand and if you um, set good examples and make people feel good it's going to keep going around 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 um, you know it's the chain effect it's like recycling it's like you know it's like it just everything everything works and and 
sequences and um, if you use those sequences sequences appropriately in a manner in which um, is good for society you're going to have a good effect there is no alternative there is no ifs there is no ifs there is only the fact that if you make people feel good then they will feel good and then that will pass on from one person to the next to the next to the next to the next you know people need to care about other people we're human pe pe human beings we don't need to learn how to be more and more callous and uncaring and uncompassionate towards other people because other some people are scrooges and want to see bah humbug and and want to make things worse and worse and worse no 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 we want to do what is modern what is psychologically healthy for society and look out for one another to be good to one another and um, to spread good news spread good news spread good thoughts spread good vibes spread spread you know talk about good things with other people you know if you have to, you know you like to talk about things you want to you you're you're you like to chat well get online and talk about good things and it'll spread if you if you say oh well, this is good happened or you know and so and so forth that's that that has such such a huge effect on society and can overcome um, the bad things in society more than people could ever imagine.